It's Helen, and we're back with another video for week one of the D4L content creation module. This is the part where we talk about the science of information overload. When creating instructional content, there are a few important concepts to understand about cognition that should influence your choices in how to structure your content. We've already talked a lot about learning styles throughout all the other modules, so the idea of multimodal approaches isn't new to you. From the cognitive psychology side of things, this isn't just about learners' personal preferences or styles, but about how the brain functions. Researchers have found that different kinds of sensory experiences relate to different channels within the working memory, a verbal text channel and a visual spatial channel. Too much into a single one of these channels can cause overload and impair learning, but sensory experiences balanced in both channels simultaneously can support each other and increase learning. Related both to cognitive load and to each learner's individual skills and experience, another important principle that multimedia content can help support is the idea of scaffolding. This practice refers to providing temporary support to help students reach a higher level in their work than they could without assistance. You don't expect them to reach the top all in one step. You recognize that it will take a series of smaller step-ups, each building upon the last. Some learners may climb more quickly than others depending on other factors, and some will need more support than others. Even if you haven't heard of this term used for instruction before, you've probably seen scaffolding practices in action. Here are some techniques you may want to incorporate into your own multimedia content. Chunking. You hear us talk about this a lot in this module in terms of deciding how long to make each piece of content so learners can easily digest each piece. Demonstrating. Sharing examples of a completed activity so learners know where they're headed, such as the work we've shared from our alumni. Discussing can really help learners to process their thoughts. Pre-teaching vocabulary. We've been trying to do that by sharing vocabulary lists as part of each lesson. Providing templates. This can help learners to organize their process so that they proceed forward with greater comfort. The D4L instructional design plan template is an example of this. And pausing for questions relates back to discussion. It's also important to encourage metacognition in your learners. This refers to activities where you're aware of your own thought process. Such activities have been shown to increase the chances of information making its way into long-term memory. Throughout D4L, we have included reflection activities as a metacognitive strategy, along with a defined planning process with the self-assessment along the way. Some metacognitive strategies you may have used in the past or may want to include in your content are brainstorming, predicting, reflecting, defining goals, planning, and self-assessment. These all require more active thinking and relating content to personal ideas or goals. What others might be good for your learners? Now that you know more about how your learners think, you're ready to consider other principles for e-learning.